So the last part to formatting your research paper is the footnotes and the bibliography. Now, although it's not hard, it is very tedious. So let me first bring, show you um, a sample of my paper. Um, that I used um, so I can show you how we um, insert a footnote. So, um, did I paste it in? Oh, I'll take this. Okay, so this is my, this is the research paper that I wrote for my uh, graduate course um, this past uh, semester. So um, if you notice here, let me go to the second paragraph. Um, anything that has quotes, okay, anytime you quote an author, you have to put a footnote at the end of the sentence. So you know, um, this is a fairly long sentence, but I have two quotes here, um, both from the same source. So um, I needed to put, so footnotes go to the, at the end of every sentence. Um, so when I go to, I'm just going to insert one here. So to insert a footnote, you're going to go to insert, and then it just says footnote, and it'll automatically put the correct number that needs to be there, the next available number. Um, and so here I already have one footnote here. And um, so what we put down here has to be in a very specific order. So. If I go to, if you go to Google, go back to your Google Classroom and underneath research paper, um, you will see um, footnote and bibliography formatting. Okay. And when you open this up, it, the first page shows you how to, um, what order you need to put the information in, whether you're, you got your information from a book a news paper or magazine article, a website or a video. I'm sure most of you did websites or um, books. Um, so this is the footnote part. And then if you scroll down the next page is the bibliography. Okay, so for every footnote, you have to have uh, the source also listed on the bibliography page, which I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Um, now, um, that first, let me go back to final draft. Okay, so this first um, footnote uh, was part of my thesis. It said, the United States foreign policy prior to 1941 was one of isolationism. Now, that's not necessarily well known, so I needed, although I didn't use any quotes, I did get the information from somewhere. And I got it from a website. And the website is conveniently in the footnote. So I can show you where it is and what it looks like. Okay, so I got that information from the Office of the Historian. So that's the name of the website and the name of the article was American Isolationism in the 1930s, okay? So referring to my website, this is, so this is the footnote. For any website I need to put in quotes. Now here's the thing, any punctuation or parentheses need to be in the exact position as it's listed, okay? So for a website, the content page is put in quotes, okay? So, and my, 
content page, the name of the, remember the name of the article, American Isolationism in the 1930s. That's in a quote, those are in quotes, and then I have a comma. And then next, it tells me, I put the name of the website. Well, that was Office of the Historian. So that's just listed Office of the Historian. And that has a comma after the name of the website. And then it says to list either last modified or edited date or the date accessed. Okay, so what that means is, is that um, if I go on to the website here, the very bottom of the page, it'll tell you, some websites will tell you last edited or last modified, and it'll list a date. This particular website does not. So in that case, what I'm going to do is just list date accessed. And so what I do is, um, oh, and actually if I put this, blah, 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 I need to actually put access. That's one thing I did leave out of this footnote. So I need to put in here access. May 16th, 2022, a comma, and then I paste the website. Okay, now to take a look at a website that actually does have a last edited or uh, last modified date, this is a website that I used for my, for my research paper. Um, so if you notice when I scroll all the way down at the bottom, it says right here, um, yeah, page maintained by Larry W. Jewell from Purdue University, created 12-1296, updated 12-1996. So for, my, for this particular site, you can see the last time it was updated was 12-1996. So instead of using the anytime you have an updated or last edited or last modified, you would use uh, that date as opposed to the accessed date. And if I bring up my paper, I can show you. So here, here's, here's my, so in this case, this particular website had a specific author, so I, I included that specifically for what I needed to do. But the name, of the, the name of the website was the Roberts Commission Attack on Pearl Harbor by the Japanese. Um, last modified, December 19, 1996, and I listed the website. Versus the one from the Office of the Historian where it didn't have a last edited date. I just put accessed. Okay, so that's how we footnote a website. Okay, and here there's here's another example. It's like so the name of the the name of the page, the content page, so the article piece, and then the name of the website. In this case, it was History Columbia University access to a particular date and then the website and don't forget you need to put the commas in okay now if i wanted to footnote a book okay so a book it's the author's first name last name comma and then we italicize the title and then we include in parentheses the city of publication a colon the name of the publishing company, comma, the year it was published, close parentheses, comma, and then the pages that the information came from. Okay, so I'm going to do this one uh, with you. All right, so um, I'll just stick, uh, I'll stick my uh, footnote here. So I'm going to insert my footnote, okay, and again, the, the number will pop up, 
and I'm going to use uh, much anyone who did uh, their research paper on Pearl Harbor. We used a lot of information from a book um, by Lori Collier Hillstrom called Defining Moments: The Attack on Pearl Harbor. So, as the as the format noted, I have to do author's first name and then last name and then the italicized of the book. So. I have to put my cursor here, and so first name, oops, Lori Collier Hillstrom, comma, and then I'm going to put the title of the book, Defining Moments, and when a book has two titles, you put a colon in between, oh fudge undo that. I actually do that all the time. Okay. Uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor. Okay. And you'll notice how we need to, the title is, the title of the book is always italicized. So, uh, italicize my title. Okay. And then my footnote after that says I need in parentheses put the city of publication, the company, and the year. And you can always find that in the first few pages of the book. Okay. It's usually after the first page. So uh, looking at my book here. And Okay, got a copyright of 2009. Name of the publishing company is Omni Graphics Inc. And, but I do not see a city of publication. Okay. In that case, what I would do, and I have unfortunately had to do this before, I have um, actually, oh, it's on the, actually the previous page, Omni Graphics, Detroit, Michigan. Okay. So, book city of publication is listed first. Okay, so in parentheses I put Detroit. A colon, if I remember, if I remember correctly, yep, colon, then the publishing company, then the year. So it's um. Graphics Inc. and the year is 2009. And I close the parentheses and then I put a comma after, right? Potion Company, comma, year published. Okay, so I need to put a comma after Omni Graphics Inc of publication year, and then to finish off, I would put the actual page numbers that um, that specific piece of information came from. And let's say, I know we did a uh, warnings of the imminent attack, let's say page 27. And you don't put a P or anything, you just put the number. And if it um, was multiple pages, I could put 28, 27 through 28, and then a period, and then that is the, how we would footnote a 